Welcome to Wisdom from the Word. Bible Fellowship Church is a family of believers who want to help others discover and strengthen their relationship with Jesus Christ. And we're praying this message helps you strengthen your walk with Him. Now let's dive in. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Wisdom from the Word. Today's passage comes from Proverbs 29, verse 16. Read along with me. When the wicked increase, transgression increases, but the righteous will look on their downfall. Now, when the secular world is asked about the problem of evil and its origins, the conclusion is that evil is a product of society. If the culture wasn't so bad, evil would not be an issue. There's a problem with this line of thinking. They say evil comes from society and culture, but what makes up society and culture? People. By blaming society and culture for the wickedness, it doesn't give an answer. It just shifts the blame one degree so that individuals are no longer responsible for their wickedness. Now it's culture's fault. This rationale by no means absolves the individual for their actions or their attitudes. There's a biblical principle at work here. When more people are massed together, the more wicked people increase. The more wicked increase in a society, the more the society will turn towards wickedness. It's a cycle. This is not a recent phenomenon. It's been happening ever since the fall of man. In fact, one of the most powerful examples of it was not long after the fall. It only took six chapters into Genesis for this kind of situation to develop. Read Genesis 6 verses 1 and 2. It says, When man began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters were attractive, and they took their wives and any they chose. You see, first man began to multiply. Man is sinful, and we have, in, we have in ourselves an ingrained natural bend towards wickedness. If it feels good, do it, without regard to truth. Mankind will always lean towards sin and ungodliness unless God intervenes by His grace. So first man multiplies. Then they start to modify. To suit their desires, they started changing God's definition and the intention of marriage. This perverted God's plan for marriage and distorted the whole role of the family as well. The family was originally designed to pass on godliness from one generation to another through a God-centered marriage. Without this foundation, man became even more proficient in passing on and increasing in his wickedness. A few short verses later, verse 5 tells us, The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention and the thoughts of his hearts were only evil continually. The wickedness of the wicked only increased. The original intent for mankind was to worship the Creator and glorify Him forever. Now the world was filled with men who worshiped the creation. Romans chapter 1, verse 22 through 25 says that claiming to be wise, they became fools. They exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. So God gave them up to the lust of their hearts to impurity to dishonoring their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Wickedness spread throughout them like cancer so that every one of their thoughts were continually evil. God's desire was for man to meditate on him and his word. Instead, they meditated on their godless desires, which led to even worse conditions of excessive violence and perversion. Their wickedness would lead to their destruction and their condemnation. In our proverb, Solomon is letting us know that the wickedness and transgression will increase, but in the end, the righteous will see their downfall. Wickedness cannot reign for long. It'll consume the land to a point of catastrophe. It did so in Noah's day, and that's the way that it'll be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. In the meantime, how can we keep the wicked from increasing? Every time a child is born, another ungodly heart enters the human race. We are sinners, and sinners reproduce sinners. So what are we to do? The answer is in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. As individuals place their trust in Christ, the Lord takes their wicked heart and exchanges it for a godly one. They pass from death to life. Their sin is exchanged for the righteousness of Christ. Those estranged from God are reconciled to Him. One by one, we can hold back the tide of wickedness until he who restrains is taken out of the way. May we be inclined to ask why, we may be inclined to ask why he's taking so long to let the wicked fall. I'm sure this has been asked for centuries. Let's be glad that he's patient. 
2 Peter 3.9 says that the Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. I know that I'm glad He waited for me. Back in Genesis 6.3, God said that He's not going to strive with man forever. Now, we don't know how much time we have left. So let's be found with concern for the souls of others, not just complaining about their wickedness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for today, for the wisdom that comes from your word. Lord, you know the wickedness in this world and and the weight that we feel from it. Help us be concerned with the souls of men. Help us to share your gospel with others so that we depopulate hell and repopulate heaven. We ask for your help to do this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us for Wisdom in the Word. If you're looking for additional resources to help strengthen your walk with Jesus Christ, visit bfcsebring.com or download our mobile app.